This is Nate with Landmark Implement, and today I'll be going over the basic AMS setup on an S600 series combine utilizing a 2630 display. One of the first things we want to do is start off and ensure that we have uh, the display completely set up and ready to go. To do that, we'll start in our menu in the lower right hand corner and then select GS3 soft key D from the menu. Starting with resources on the right hand side, we want to ensure this page is completely filled out. Selecting our client farm field, if we're pulling this display from let's say a tractor or another machine, we want to make sure that we have the task is harvest changed over and then ensure that we have the current crop season selected. From there, we'll transition over to our equipment setup, soft key H. Our machine model should be pre-populated on here. If not, we wanna ensure that we do have that picked from the list. And then our machine name should pre-populate in with the machine serial number. Once we have that pulled in, we should be able to see our offsets of the machine pull up. I would encourage everyone to come in to our offsets and confirm the measurements with the tape measure on the machine to ensure that all mapping and recording um, is being documented correctly. We do see a description down here in the bottom with the reference letters to ensure that you're measuring the right areas utilizing this picture to confirm what the description says in the bottom. The next thing we'll check is our header tab. After hooking up the header, again, we want to make sure that uh, the correct model and name show up. If you don't see the correct model of your header plugged in, um, go ahead and cycle power on the machine, turn everything off, wait a few minutes and turn it back on, and we should see this information pre-populate. This should pull in all of your width and rows and all the information from the header. From there, again, we want to make sure that our offsets are correct. We can come in here referencing the letters in the description from the picture and ensure these measurements are in there correctly. Down at the bottom, we do want to make sure that we have overlap control checked so that will turn off those rows if they're not gathering uh, any crop from there from a previously harvested area. The only time that this generally is turned off is if we're starting in on a field and we're hanging a portion of the header over an area that there will be no crop in, like a well road or the side of a field along a fence line. With that turned off, you can utilize these arrows at the bottom to turn those rows off manually. And then once you exit that area, you want to ensure that you have the overlap control turned back on, so that way you have accurate yield information. Our document tab on the right-hand side, if we select that, we should only have two tabs open during harvest. One will be the crop that we're harvesting, and then new will always be displayed on there for another operation. And this never goes away. From there, we have to select our harvest settings by selecting and ensuring that we have everything with an asterisk filled out. So we need to have our crop type in there. We don't have to have a brand, but you can fill that out if you want it documented. The variety information needs to be entered in. And if you have ahead of time created a variety locator file from John Deere Operations Center and copy that information over to the display, turning this on will ensure that it will show you those varieties as you travel through the field and document them correctly for each variety as that changes. With this turned on, you do get the option to also turn on an audible tone to alert you as you transition to those other areas, um, especially if you're looking for changes as you transition through the field. The last item on this page is your residue management. If you'd like to document that, you can select those, but you don't necessarily have to. Once those settings have been entered, we'll accept them and then come down to our load names. We don't have to track our loads but if we do want to see our load information broken out, we need to fill out the load name, a load destination, and then we'll start with load numbers. You can manually change these numbers 
or you can have the loads change automatically by selecting the auto increment load number. And when you unload, each time you press the unloading auger button, this will go ahead and transition into the next load. With this completely filled out, if we go over to our totals page, under our totals page, we can see everything that we entered in from our loads. Right now we have all of our field totals. And if we cycle this button, we can then see our load totals displayed. So every time that we cycle to the next load or unload, we will see this information reset. This is really helpful when gaining loads for our yield monitoring calibrations. We can monitor how many pounds are coming in the combine so we have a good consistent amount that we're gathering for each load. Transitioning up to our mapping area and then going down to our map settings. In the foreground, we typically want to display a background layer that shows what we've harvested, neither typically a moisture or yield information as we look out over the field. So we'll select our wet yield there and hit accept. Over on the left hand side, we do have our legend. If we're viewing that wet yield in the background, if we push on this box, we can edit this legend. So if we want to make these increments a little bit tighter, we can come in here and adjust the scale accordingly. We can also come down here to the bottom and cycle between our coverage and overlap or turning back on that yield information to be displayed in the background. We'll transition on now to our guidance tab. In our guidance tab, if we're running row feelers on the corn head, we need to turn those on initially. We'll go into our guidance settings to do that, down to row sense settings. We'll hit this button with the swooping arrows. By pressing that, then we see that that system is now enabled. Once that is enabled, we can go back to our view of our guidance tab and we'll see the row feeler icon show up. Now this icon will change colors depending on the state that the row feelers are currently in and depending on where we're at in the field. Next, we will transition on to some of the combine settings. Well, again, we will go back to our menu and then we'll select the combine tab, soft key A. This is our main combine page where it's going to display our main combine information and our current settings that we have set in the combine. Scrolling down through this list, the next key down is G. This is going to display our harvest information. We'll be able to see our totals again from this page, our field totals, as well as our crop totals. Pushing F on the combine image will take us back to that main combine performance overview. The next tab down is our combine setup. From here, we'll start with changing our crop type and then changing our threshing conditions. These are some preset starting points to change the combine to depending on uh, the conditions that we're in. And lastly, on this page, we'll want to set up our grain loss calibration. This is what will determine what our loss monitor looks like. Uh, this is what sets the default to our bars here of our losses. Selecting soft key A will take us into our virtual grain tank level. This information comes in and estimates our grain tank level based on our mass flow sensor and how much grain is coming in the combine. So once the combine is full, you'll wanna go ahead and set the full level so that way we're not spilling any grain over um, and then, of course, before you start off, you'll want to set your empty level. B is any of our unfolding options. If we have an unfolding grain bin or if we have a folding auger assembly. C will display our chopper position. D will be our moisture sensor setup. If we want to be alarmed based on moisture readings that come outside of these predetermined points that we have set. If we need to make any corrections, um, by taking a sample uh, and comparing it to see if the moisture sensor is on in the combine. Uh, we can come in here and enter in any offsets if we notice that that is off. 
If it's a negative number, we'll just select this positive and negative, and that'll add our negative sign to go the other direction. If you were happen to have a moisture sensor fail in the middle of the field, and you wanted to go ahead and continuing harvest, uh, harvesting that day without stopping, you can change this over to a fixed moisture reading to get you through um, to maintain some accuracy of yield documentation on the field. The last setting on this page is our preset points. Uh, this is where we can come in and store some customized settings and create new set points to come back to um, later on in the season or another year if you decide that some of the preset numbers um, in the dry or wet conditions are quite a bit further off than where you'd like to start the season out at. By selecting our double up arrow button down here in the bottom, this just gives you um, a recommended guide for um, the combine setup outside the cab. So for that given crop type, it'll tell you what all settings need to be changed. If we go back to our combine page and then select our header icon, soft key I, this will pull in automatically our header information. Again, if these numbers seem to be off, I go ahead and turn the combine off and turn it back on. So we should have our spacing, our number of rows, um, and more importantly, our record stop height. This is something that will have to be changed based on field conditions. If we've got a lot of terraces we're driving through, uh, we might have to have our recording stop height at a much higher position so that way we're not turning off that recording as we transition through those terraced areas. Our next tab down is our header setup for automatic header height control or any other automated functions. Um, to come in here, we'll just want to check each item that we want turned on. In the simulator, it's not going to let me, um, but this is where we'll enable that functionality if you want those on for the field that you're in. Soft key J is our engine information. This can be monitored from a couple different areas, uh, but this is one area we can reference to ensure that we're maintaining and we're keeping the combine full at all times and keeping it um, ideally uh, as close to 100% as possible. So we're maintaining our efficiency with the combine and keeping the threshing system full. Soft key B with the book with the wrench. These are our diagnostics and calibrations. From here in the calibrations drop down, we want to ensure that we're starting off by doing our header calibrations um, before we start off the season to ensure that all of our sensors and everything are calibrated properly on our header. The other thing that we'll need to do is our mass flow vibration calibration. This will be done by having the header completely hooked up and the combine completely empty running at 100% with the header in the working position. So whatever height that is, is where it needs to be lowered down to. This will go ahead and take out any type of vibrations in the combine or any other readings that would throw the sensors, the mass flow sensor off. It will take those readings out. That way we have good yield information and good yield accuracy in the combine. Again, before we start the season, we want to ensure that our temperature sensor that's built into our moisture sensor is accurate. We'll want to do this by making sure that ideally if the combine is parked in the shade or early in the morning before the sun is beating down on the side of the combine, we want to make sure that we get a good accurate reading and ensure that this matches uh, the ambient temperature outside with where you're at. All of these calibrations will guide you through the steps that are required to complete them. So it follows, um, it will follow you along and guide you through those processes. Lastly, um, you want to make sure that we do your yield calibration when you're out in the field. By pressing on our book and our, the wrench again, we do have more diagnostics information that we can go through if we're having some issues um, with any of the automatic header height control options or anything else in the combine, we do get a ton of information in here that we can reference beyond just a diagnostic code.